Well, hello everyone. Glad you could make it. We're joined by Reggie. Uh, he was having a few issues. Still am. I was just trying <laughs> to see if uh, looks like we're still having problems with uh, Facebook. Um, Reggie, um, you and I can you and I get together and see why? Oh, look, now it took. Well, it's on Facebook all, all the way off. Now I'm it's coming on back on. I'm going to add me to the stream. So, everyone, this is this is a basic uh, top mount refrigerator. Um, we're going to go through it. We're going to we're going to enjoy it. We're going to have a good time. We're going to we're going to see what we can see if we can't uh, teach you a few things. And then we're gonna we're going to uh, wrap it up with some questions. Um, one of the things that we want to uh, to do here is uh, plug our plug plug and compass because they're the ones that that are sponsoring this <laughs> class, um, and we want to make sure that that we do them their due diligence. Which Reggie is the uh, Reggie is, Reggie, is, Reggie is the main man. As you can see on the very bottom of the screen, scrolling across the bottom, uh, both my information and Reggie's information is scrolling. So make sure you take that information down. Um, you can see Reggie is uh, right there at EdenCompass.com, his phone number. And as always, lean on your rep. Um, that's sound what test, sound Reggie test. has been yeah. preaching ever since I have known Reggie. And you've got to make sure that you are leaning on your rep and letting him know if you're having issues. Um, one of the things that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see that, Reggie. That's right. Exactly. Uh, one of the things that, that, we've, that we have learned, Reggie sent me an email yesterday and said, hey, listen, we need to have some training and in uh in Lawrenceville um we're having some issues with some with some with some pro whirlpool product and um he and I are going to uh get a class together and uh you guys make sure if you're in the Atlanta area or want to come down sign up for the class um Reggie is having uh problems with his microphone it's not seeming to work at a hotel so that could be a bad that could be a problem for him um, one of the things that I want to mention because, you, <laughs> that on here is that we easy stock. Okay, guys, I, I every time I see this, I I have to sit down and and let everybody know how what a great program this is. I mean, if I was still doing if I was still doing appliance repair work, I would have this. Actually, I do have it, but it doesn't really do me any good um, because I don't I don't stock parts anymore. But one of this is a stocking tool. Okay, not only does it does it tell you where your parts are, it will also help you order parts. You can go right to the Encompass website. You can get a three hundred and sixty degree view. This is a great great product. If you look at the bottom, there is there is it, depending on if you have an Android or if you have an an iPhone, uh, just scan the QR code that'll bring it up, set you up for some easy stock. <coughs> if I was like I said, if I was um, still had my company, I would definitely be using easy stock. Um, it can be for one person or it can be for you know a hundred people. It tells you one of the things that. I was always the independent guy. Okay, I only had it was only me. But one of the things that that used to I used to drive me crazy was I knew that I had a part in my truck, but I couldn't find it. So what I, what you you do with Easy Stock is it will actually help you label things and put it in a in a bin, and then you subdivide your your um, your van by by bins. So this is a great, great tool. I could never say anything, uh, anything better than than if it was me. I, I would definitely have this tool. 
Okay. So for today, we're going to talk about a top mount refrigerator. There are basically five, two, four, five, five of the um, recessed handled twin cooling um, internal display. Uh, most of them come with ice makers. There are two my ice makers that they have. They have a, a twist ice maker, which is also what is known commonly in the market as a flex tray ice maker. And then they have they have two that are automatic, which those are, those are the heat heat models, um, which uses the old style um, the old style ice maker, which produces uh, about another about another um, pound to a pound and a half of ice per day. Okay, uh, the only one in the list here that does not have an ice maker is the RT18M6114. Um, that one does not have an ice maker. Okay. So one of the things that whenever I was, I was um, doing appliances, um, one of the things you, you've always got to know is where can I get information? Okay. I'm, here is a listing from North America. That's the latest information. You always want to go and get all the latest information that you can get. <clears throat> um, things change. They find that there's a mistake in the in the um, in the manual. Um, we're going to go through the the manual that I have, and there are a couple of mistakes in the manual. Um, I've tried to correct them. Uh, and hopefully they, they transferred over whenever I started to correct them. Okay. One of the things that we want to make sure that we that we do whenever we find whenever we, we come up on to the uh, the appliance itself. Okay. Number one, if you're going to replace a part, either either electrical, mechanical, unplug it if you can, please. If, if you don't, you run the risk of getting getting a shock. Um, the reason I said uh, unplug it at any time, if you're defrosting, you're gonna you're still gonna have to want to unplug it because if you're defrosting the the, the refrigerator, you're gonna have to have a uh, <coughs> probably a, a heat gun um, or I prefer a a um, a steamer. But you want to make sure that it's always unplugged. Okay, um, always correct. Use the correct replacement parts. Please get them from from a reputable dealer. Don't buy gym line. Uh, those those parts are are not OEM specified. Um, you want to get them from a Compass. Um, I know some guys that that prefer a Cam and Compass when they use their Easy Stock. Um, they they uh, they're able to order the parts right then all on the app. Um, it'll give you an update on it to tell you where it's at. The other thing is, um, if you're buying your parts from Encompass, you can always go to Encompass and say, "Hey, listen, I want to excuse me, I want to um, I want to see about maybe getting a discount." And if you've got the volume, uh, you're going to get. I'm sure that they can they can work with you to get you a discount. OK, um, when troubleshooting, verify that the wiring harnesses are connected securely uh, through this presentation. One of the, the next step that we're going to go through is actually how to replace the doors. Um, not really. We're going to swap the hinges is what I'm going to go through. Um, whenever I was a technician, people would get there. Would um, I actually work for Best Buy and Circuit City? Um, I would get, we would have the store sell something. The customer would get the product home. Lo and behold, they got the hinge on the wrong side. <clears throat> they thought that they wanted a right hand hinge, but whenever they brought it home and dropped it off, it doesn't work right. Um, so they needed to change the hinge around. So that's the first thing that we're going to go through is because I ran into that a whole lot. Now, if you didn't, um, just bear with me. Okay. 
Check for visible traces of water on electrical parts. Uh, replace and secure any part that may have come in contact with water. Um, you want to make sure that it, you don't run the risk of electrocuting yourself. Um, so just always be be mindful of, of water. Okay, that's not a good thing. The other the good thing is uh, if you're going between a washer and a dryer, uh, you can always you need to always make sure that there's no current going that something has to do not, oh, excuse me, not, something does not have a direct short so that whenever you touch the washer and then touch the dryer, uh, you became the conduit and now now you're literally shocking yourself, uh, which I've done several times, which is probably the, the one of the things that, that you always got to avoid, okay? We're going to check the status of the parts after replacement always whenever you Whenever you decide that that you've replaced the right part, always make sure that you check it afterwards to make sure that what that everything is 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 good, um, that there are any w loose wires that's hidden. Um, one of the other things that you want to do, whenever I was a technician, um, I was a little older than than uh, most of the guys today. Um, we didn't have a camera that I could take a picture of. Um, I actually used to carry a notepad around in my, in my pocket. And I would, I would, I would write down everything that wire for wire and how they were and, and what wire was where so that I made sure that, um, that I put all the wires back on. Right. Cause the worst thing you want to do is, is to go to all the trouble of replacing something and then, lo and behold, you miswired it, and now you've blown the whole part up. Um, so make sure that that you always check after you after you um, install the parts. Okay, um, the refrigerator it's got to be grounded properly. Um, this refrigerator it demands an earth ground. Um, it actually in the in the wiring schematics shows that it has to have an earth ground. Um, there won't be any more of the uh, of the using a three to two plug. Um, they don't want, they can't use that. Um, it will cause problems with this refrigerator because of the board. Okay. Uh, the refrigerator should be plugged in and at a dedicated outlet, something that's been that way for the last uh, probably 30 years. Um, they want it on a dedicated outlet so that we don't have, uh, we don't have uh, voltage going through that, that causes the, the amp, the amps spike and you end up breaking a, the brake, throwing the breaker. Um, consumers do not repair the refrigerator. Okay. Nothing should be stored in this refrigerator except food. <coughs> One of the things that has, that is brought out several times in the manual is that flammable substances you can't put in this refrigerator, alcohol, benzene, ether, uh, LP gas, why you would put LP gas in the refrigerator, I don't know, but they're covering all their bases. One of the other things that they don't want to, uh, to happen is for you to store your drugs that require a precise temperature. Okay. So if you have a, if you have something that has to be stored at, at 38 degrees, it needs to be constant 38. So don't, don't go and and put this in the refrigerator. You need something that you can um, actually make that that happen for the for the customer. Okay, here's just a, a visual. Um, I'm more of a visual guy than I am a a uh, a, a sight guy. Um, so um, one of the things that it, it, right here is you know, um, like I said, unplug. Uh, make sure that you're using the right components. Um, make sure that all the stuff that are that in the wiring harness, if you're messing with the wiring harness, make sure that they all are, are bundled back together tightly. Um, I used to use a zip tie um, whenever I was doing that, whenever there was any chance of it not being correct. Okay. Um, repair, uh, remove the dust and other components. Um, and Always wipe down your refrigerator for if you do any work. Um, some people are are re very particular about their about their product, and they want you to wipe it down 
uh, we all know that that reviews today are are one of the things that shape our, our business. Um, so make sure that you go ahead and and wipe everything down. Um, if you're in the refrigerator and, and you grab the the uh, you grab a shelf, wipe the shelf down. If you open the door and you you've got your hand and you got prints on the door, wipe it down. Um, after after you're done, check the repair the of your work. Make sure that where everything works pro product. Uh, per <laughs> Make sure that everything works properly. Okay, um, one of the things that that you want <coughs> to excuse me. One of the things that you want to be careful of again is is electricity. So please watch out for for any electrical components that you that you might see um, that that could get you shocked. And if you do, tell the customer. You know, hey, Miss Miss Jones, listen. I noticed in your refrigerator here that the way you're storing uh, your water uh, could lead to spillage under the under the um, light bulb, and it could short the light bulb out. And then whenever you go to replace it, it could shock you. So just make sure that you let the customer know if it's something that they can they can prevent. Okay, one of the one of the things that they want to bring out uh, rap really good is don't put any kind of bottle or glass inside the freezer. Um, you'd be surprised. Uh, uh, some people will put stuff in the freezer, forget about it, and it explodes inside the refrigerator. Here, let me show you. Here's somebody that's done that before. Okay, let's not let's not do that. Be be smart about it, because whenever you do, it makes a heck of a mess. Okay. Um, if you can always, if something happens and it's, and it does explode, you run the risk of, of cutting yourself, uh, causing, and, uh, once you touch it, it could explode all kinds of issues. Okay. Um, don't allow users to store lengthy bottles in the refrigerator. Um, usually at the top on the top shelf, um, it, it, you're not going to be able to close the door. It's not going to seal properly. Always make sure that you're on the top shelf or your butter and, and your small things that, that will not interfere with the closing of the door. Okay. Um, do not use, once again, pharmaceutical products, uh, scientific material, put it in the refrigerator. Don't do that. Um, products with temperature controls could, should not be stored in the refrigerator. Um, and it could cause, it just could cause abnormal generation of heat or fire. If you're, if you're, um, storing stuff in there that is not supposed to be in there. Okay. Um, do not allow users to disassemble or alter the, uh, the appliance. Um, I ran up, ran into one where a lady had their refrigerator on a, uh, on a hundred foot extension cord. Uh, you can't do that. You run the risk of of it, that shorting out or causing an issue with the with the um, with the board, and it it just you can't do it. Okay. Um, one of the other things, uh, don't don't put stuff on top of the refrigerator. It's it's not safe, and it also inhibits the the flow of air. So just don't store articles on top of the on top of the refrigerator. Okay, one of the things if you open and close the door a couple of times, <coughs> excuse me, um, it can move the stuff forward, um, and when next time you open it, it drops it on your head. So just don't just be careful. Okay, don't don't if you're looking around and you see water on the floor, number one the the you get. I always took pictures. Okay, uh, whenever I walked into a into a product, I didn't care what it was. If I was, if it was a washer, it was a dryer, it was a refrigerator. I took pictures before I ever touched the product. While the customer was still there with me, I took pictures, and the customer always said, "What are you doing?" And I'm like, "Well, I'm just, I'm just making making notes." Um, visible notes that I can that we can have uh, if we have a conversation 
of, of where things are and how they were. Um, so just make sure that, that, that you, um, make sure you cover yourself, cover your, uh, I call it the CMA principle. I cover my butt. Okay. One of the things about this, about this refrigerator. Okay. Yeah. You have several options. It's called flex zones, okay? You can have the freezer that freezes, the refrigerator that cools. You can have the freezer off. You can have the refrigerator on. You can have the freezer on, the refrigerator off. You can have the uh, the both of them so that they're not cooling, uh, not freezing. Um, or you could have the refrigerator off and the freezer um, just cooling. So... How do they do this? It's called twin cooling, okay? What it does is there is a, a mixing valve that literally, if you look at the, if you look at the, um, on the left-hand side, there's a diagram. Um, that, that stuff, the refrigerant runs through a mixing valve. Whenever the, the refrigerator is first plugged in, the number one thing that it will do is to try to cool the freezer first. And then once it cools the freezer, it will then swap down and cool. It will, it'll, that mixing valve will change and it will go between the freezer and the refrigerator. Um, if you have any questions about that, um, we'll deal with it on down a little bit later. Okay. The, the purpose of it is to, to have even cooling. Okay. We want the same coolness. We want the same freshness. Um, a lot of the times you get um, you get stuff that wilts. You get stuff that will freeze in, in certain sections. That's what this does is this helps prevent all of that is uh, those issues. Okay. All but one have an automatic ice maker. Okay. Um the, the flex tray ice maker makes about 130 cubes if you're lucky. That's the most it will make uh, a day. The, the, the regular ice maker that's the heat sink ice maker um, produces about, uh, another, about another 80 to 100 cubes. Um, depends on how it's set and, and how often it cycles. Um, so your ice maker, um, is, is a great thing here in the South. Um, we need our ice. Uh, one of the things, um, I got, I, I am at my parents' house. My father had a, had an operation and, and I'm, I'm helping them right now. Um, and he and I use a lot of ice. So the flex tray, which is what he has, um, the twist tray, I'm sorry, not flex, uh, the twist tray is what he has in his ice maker. And it um, it almost won't, won't keep up with us because we both like a lot of ice in our drinks, okay? Um, one of the other things is there is a power freeze and a power cool. So let's say I go to the, to the grocery store and I buy a bunch of produce. I can, or, or, or anything that I need to cool down in the refrigerator. I can put power cool on, which will bring the temperature down. It doesn't really bring it down. It just, as you put items in that have gotten warm, it helps cool the whole refrigerator down so that you don't have a huge sway in temperatures. Uh, same thing with the power freeze. Um, whenever I go to Sam's Club and I buy a bunch of meat, um, and I come in and I put it back in the in the freezer. I want it to cool down as fast because I don't want to make. Sure, I do not want the it to thaw, which causes ice shards on it. Okay, these refrigerators have a a reach um, and slide pantry. Um, what it does is is it will keep the the meat and the dairy products uh, for a longer period of time. Along with the, um, it will also help the uh, the produce. Okay, there is a there. Here is the uh, kind of the the breakdown of, of what's in it. Um, 
The R18 is on the left side. The R21 is on the right. They both have R600A refrigerant in them. Um, as we all know, R600A is basically butane. Uh, it's it's very flammable. Um, it, it uses a uh, BLDC, which is a brushless direct current motor. Um, the oil, the oil that's in it, they both they both have mineral oil. Um, the evaporator uh, is a split fin type on both of them. Um, it uses a condenser. The dryer is a molecular sleeve dryer. Um, what is the, the benefits of that? It's a it helps to reduce contamination and energy efficiency. Okay. There's your, your information on your capillary tubes for both your refrigerator and your freezer. Um, the step valve, which is the switching valve, is um, a three-way valve. Um, it goes from the, from the compressor. Um, one goes to the freezer. One goes to the refrigerator. Okay. Um, the thermal fuse, that prevents overheating in the freezer. That's 100 and 10, 110 degrees Celsius, which is basically a 230 degree Fahrenheit um, temperature. Okay. The bimetal for preventing overheating of the refrigerator uh, is 104 degrees. Okay. On the next slide, it's just a continuation. I did, I figured that one degree Celsius, you know, is about 33 degrees. OK, um, you get three degrees Celsius. It's all about the same. So, you know, you're just adding 32 degrees for that, basically, um, for for the specifications. OK, so this is your temperature selection. Um, your own is on as at uh, one degree. When it turns off, it's at minus five. That's at That's all Celsius. OK. So minus five is not Celsius. It's not the Celsius. It's um, it's the the the, uh, the minus five is the the distance of drop. It gets 0. 0.5 degree drop. So it should be somewhere right around 30, 31 point five to thirty two at uh, at twenty at twenty thirty degrees. 32 degrees. Okay. The first defrost cycle is a six hour plus or minus 10 minutes. That's whenever you first plug the refrigerator in. That is the diverse, the defrost cycle. Now this has an adaptive defrost control. So what will happen is the defrost cycle in the refrigerator is about 12 hours, 12 to 72 hours. Depends on how many times the door is opened and closed. Okay. That's the condition. Okay. The defrost cycle in the refrigerator is about six to 72 hours, depending on how many times the door is opened again. Okay. And if the, the pause cycle is about five plus, plus or minus a minute. So the defrost cycle, <coughs> excuse me, the defrost sensor um, is uh, five point, excuse me, I just moved it, uh, 5.9 kiloliters. Um, the thermal fuse is rated at uh, 350 degree, uh, 10 amp, 10 amps. Uh, the operating temperature is 109 plus plus or minus uh, a degree Celsius, which is about the same thing as it was on here, which was 230 degrees. Okay. So let's talk about what we do and what the buttons are telling us, okay? Type A, if you look on the right, was the is the refrigerator information, um, which one it applies to. 
Then there's a type B, a type B that is a which is a a different. Um, it basically is all the same, but when we get laid on down, we're going to have a little bit different uh, information. So the first, the, the zero one is the power freeze button. Okay. Um, and the, and the ice maker. Okay. Uh, the number two is the freezer button. Okay. The number three is the refrigerator button. The number four is the power cool button. The number five, if you put it in Sabbath mode. So that's how you get it into Sabbath mode. Okay. What tools do I need to work on this refrigerator? Okay. I'm going to need Phillips head screwdriver. I'm going to need a flat headed screwdriver. I need a socket wrench that's a 10 millimeter. Um, if you look at it, it tells you that it's for disassembling and assembling the door hinge. Um, a five millimeter Allen wrench is for assembling and disassembling of the, the mid hinge. Um, so that's the five millimeter Allen wrench. You're going to need an 11 millimeter spanner wrench for assembling of the, the hinge shaft. Okay. So. The first thing that, that we talk about is how to change the swap of the door. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the three screws holding down the top table and remove the top table. Okay. I'm going to disconnect the power, the power wires that go through that. Okay. I'm going to remove the cover on the freezer cap. Okay. I'm going to remove the hinge. You're going to take off the hinge cap. Then you're going to pull the door out slightly, tilt it out a little bit at the top, and remove the door. Be very careful not to drop the door on your foot. Okay, does anybody have any questions? So far. Uh, Mikey, so how do I start flipping appliances if I only have a sedan, no truck or van? Dude, that's a, that's, Mike, that's, that's tough. I mean, you're going to laugh at this. I've seen somebody put a refrigerator up on top of their, on top of their sedan. You're without a, without a sedan, you're probably not going to be able to flip appliances. You're going to need a, you're going to need a truck or a trailer. The only, if your sedan has the power that you can pull a trailer behind it, you can do it that way. Um, but that's, that's about the only way that you can possibly flip appliances. <coughs> I did see Reggie with a, with a uh, a little small trailer on the back of his uh, his car, um, and he had enough he had enough oomph in it. The last thing you want to do is to put yourself at risk. Okay, so going back, so after I've connected disconnected the wires and removed the cover, I'm going to remove the hinge. I'm going to remove the door. Okay. Then I'm going to open the freezer door, remove the screws from the mid hinge. Um, and then I'm going to remove that door carefully. And that's not, you're going to make sure that you do the refrigerator door. So that is what you have to be very careful of. You can, I always propped it on my boot uh, so that it didn't drop and hit the floor. The last thing the customer wants to hear is to is for them their refrigerator to hear a bang while you're taking the door off. Okay, one of the things that are the caution points are take care when you take the door off that it doesn't fall on you. I was less scared about falling on me. I was then um, making sure that the uh, making sure that the I didn't drop the the door itself. The door, of course, you have to unload. 
everything in both of the doors in the in the out in in the outer door you have to make sure that there's no product in it before you before you go swapping anything around okay let me caution you about that make sure that you empty everything that's in the refrigerator and in the freezer okay so next after i've done all this i'm going to disconnect the top table I'm going to disconnect the wires on the door. I'm going to disconnect the upper hinge. I'm going to detach the freezer compartment. Okay. I'm going to disassemble the cap and the mid hinge cap. I'm going to detach the refrigerator compartment door. I'm going to disassemble the lower hinge. I'm going to detach the foot foot. Uh, you want to make sure that you you make sure that you take a picture of everything so that you know exactly which screws go where. Okay, I'm going to take the, the I'm going to take the foot out. I've got to swap the foot around into the other side whenever I go and and so that I can stop the refrigerator. Okay, I'm going to disassemble the shaft and the hinge assembly. Um, I'm going to to assemble the, the foot and the hinge on the other side. We're gonna fasten the foot again, back in where it, to the proper lay, to the proper place. Um, then I'm gonna disassemble the stopper and the auto close and the grommet. The grommet. You have to do this. Um, you can't just flip it over like you used to be able to. Okay, I'm gonna fasten the stopper, the auto close and the grommet. Whenever I get done, I'm just moving it over. Okay, disassemble the grommet and the upper side of the refrigerator. I'm going to disassemble the cap cover on the upper side of the freezer. Then I'm going to disassemble the hinge and the cover of the hinge. Okay, I'm going to disassemble da, 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 disassemble the 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 and assembly the cap space. I'm going to assemble the grommet hinge. You're just redoing everything is all you're doing. Disassemble the shaft and the hinge and assert the uh, assemble the hinge to the lower foot. Okay. Then I'm going to attach the refrigerator door. I'm going to then I'm going to reinstall the mid hinge after I put it into the door itself. I'm going to attach the freezer compartment door and you assemble the hinge. They show this that at an angle. <coughs> I never was lucky enough to do that. The one thing about this refrigerator is if you notice on the bottom, you have to have it at an angle at least to, uh, to be able to put the, the, um, the screws back in the bottom hinge. Um, make sure that you have protection on the floor so that you don't scrape the floor, scratch the floor, cause damage to the to the unit or the customer's home. Okay. After I get done with that, I'm just going to reconnect my wires. I'm going to assemble the cap the uh, cap hole in the hinge in the upper part of the table, and then I'm going to assemble the cap cover. Okay. Now, how do I get at the sensor? Well, you're going to have to remove um, the housing. You're going to, if you look, there's marked screws that, that you're going to have to have uh, removed to be able to get to them. You're going to, you're going to, after you remove the, all of these screws, you notice there's two sets. Um, you're going to, you're going to kind of run the, uh, run the wire, feed the wire out. Um, so that you can get to the sensor. I'm going to, once I do that, I'm going to remove the March screws after removing the styrofoam um, to remove the fan. Whenever I do, whenever I remove the fan, I can then lean it back up and get to the sensor. So at that, I'm going to remove the sensor and Put it all back together. Just reassemble by doing the exact same in the opposite order that you just did. Okay. So 
if I want to get into the to the multi cover, here it is right here. Okay. This is for the refrigerator, not the freezer. So you're going to remove the cap screws. You're going to remove the two other screws. See them right there. Um, you're going to pull the lower part down. Whenever you do that, you're going to push the housing um, on push the housing down, and it'll remove. And then you're all set, and you can remove that um, multi cover. Okay. Once you do that, you can remove the evaporator sensor. Okay. Pull it off of the evaporator. Um, you can remove the screws from the multi cover. Uh, unfasten the hooks and remove them. You want to remove the sensor from the multi cover. And then to put them back, you just reverse the order so that you can now um, put the put it back together and have a sensor that works properly. Okay. For the fan, you're going to follow all the procedures in slide 25. Okay. And you're going to then just the, the, the fan will just, once you do all that, you can pop it out. Okay. You're going to pull from the bottom part of the fan and remove it. So you can see there are diagrams here. Okay. The ice maker. If I am if I am in the freezer and I am trying to remove the evaporator uh, cover for the freezer so that I can get to the components, maybe I need to defrost it. Maybe I have a bad sensor. Maybe I have a bad fan. Um, the first thing I'm going to have to do is remove the ice maker. Okay, this ice maker, you remove the two screws at the top. That once you do that, you're going to grasp the the ice maker. Um, you're going to support it both front and back. You're going to pull forward. That will drop it. Once it drops down, there's a, a harness. Um, and you just simply unhook the harness. Um, it goes out. Uh, make sure that you put the screws where they belong so that you don't miss uh, put the wrong screws in the, wrong, in the hole. So make sure that the ice maker screws stay with the ice maker because as you remove the cap screws and you remove the screws, those are two different screws. And you will be sitting there wondering where in the world is the right screw. So I'm just trying to tell you before you do anything, if I'm removing the ice maker, I'm going to make sure that I've got the screws for the ice maker with the ice maker. Okay. Once I do this um, and I remove the cap screws, I can remove the screws at that point. The caution here is to make sure that the unit is unplugged. I don't worry about whether it's turned off. I unplug it. That way I have no chance of getting shot. Okay. So once I remove all of the screws, I can now reach down in the in the bottom of the refrigerator in the bottom of the freezer and reach in my hand up and pull on the bottom and it'll it'll I can pull it and remove that. Okay? If you look right here on the right, it shows that they have hey they have pulled it out but they just turned it to the side. If you do that, you can get the um you can get the the uh the fan you can get to the fan um, you can remove the fan, uh, replace the fan. You can then get to un unplug that um, and move it to the side. If you have to use a steamer because it's it's um, frozen, uh, make sure you put down towels both um, in the uh, in the floor and in the in the freezer itself. Okay, you want to make sure that you leave you. You, you, whenever you leave, it's exactly like it was before you got there. Okay. So once I, once I do that, okay, I can get to the sensor once I have moved everything. Okay. I can remove the sensor from the evaporator by just Pulling on the uh, on the uh, removing it from the housing, um, you see the screws. 
that are that are marked. You want to make sure that you take all of those screws out. Remember, uh, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Okay, remove the marked screws after removing the styrofoam from the fan, and then you can take the fan off. Okay, remove the sensor. Once you remove the sensor, you can just uh, remove, you can just uh, put it all back together the way you took it apart step by step. So once you replace your sensor, you could then put it, fit it back, fit it back into the channel. You want to put the screws back into the, uh, into the uh, styrofoam. Um, you're going to put it back into the cover and then uh, plug it back in. Okay. If I'm going to change the water valve, it goes without saying, I'm going to remove each of the, I'm going to, it says there's one screw each. Um, usually there's two. Okay. I'm going to push the housing water valve and, and I'm going to push it down and it will, uh, it will disengage. Um, and then I can unplug the water valve. Um, you have to make sure, number one, that you turn the water off because once you start unhooking everything, you're going to have water all over the floor if you don't. So you're going to you're going to remove the you're going to remove the uh, the water valve. You're going to set it down. I always had a bucket. I'm always going to get some residual water. So I had a little small bucket that I put my uh my water valve in before i was untying uh unloosening the main water supply um that also helped me that if something happened and and i thought i had the water shut off because it was running 100 feet and i couldn't really tell where the water shut off was um i had a little i had a little leeway and could just start to loosen it and then put it back Put it back real quickly if I had the I had shut off the wrong valve. Okay, um, we're going to remove. So once you do that, you're going to you're going to remove that that down where it goes to the where it goes to the um, up the refrigerator. You're going to remove all of those, put those um, unhook those, put them all, put them in, put the uh, get your new valve. You're going to put all the you're going to just reverse the process. You're going to uh, remove the, the hose from the valve, both sides, and push it back, push the um, push the, uh, the electrical components into the valve and put the, tight, put the screw uh, back in once you put the valve back in. Okay. The water pipe assembly. This is the fill tube assembly. Okay. So, like it, like it says, there's a screw on each one of the clamps. They used to be just a a stick on, but they have now gone with a screw. So, um, you want to make sure that you loosen them and remove those. Make sure that you put them down so that you know where which ones are which one, which screw goes to which component. Um, you want to remove the two screws um, at the top um, that, uh, that go to the cabinet frame. Then you can remove the pipe assembly. Um, that's in case you had a a a fraught a fraught a fro frozen up water line by way by the way. Um, so you want to make sure could be that the water line is so old that it has cracked, um, but. In any instance, you want to make sure that you're very careful with that. You can now pull the pull it out. Once you pull it out, you can check to make sure that it is not frozen. Um, if you've already determined that it's frozen, you can disconnect the the, the water line itself. Uh, go to the sink, uh, rub some hot water in it, and take and um, make sure that make sure that your uh, uh, you you get it so that water flows through that line. Okay. Okay. Your printed circuit boards. Number one, make sure that you have unplugged the refrigerator. Okay. 
The first thing I'm going to do is take out the three screws that, that hold the plate in place. Once I have, have, have that removed, I can check all my components. I can make sure that everything has the right voltage going to it, uh, the, the right voltage come out of it. If something happens and I need to replace the main PCB, I can do so and I can disconnect all the connectors. This is where you want to make sure that you absolutely take a picture and know exactly where every component is in every, <coughs> excuse me. You want to make sure that you know exactly where, which wire goes to which component. Okay. So you're just going to pull all of those off and disengage everything. You're going to unhook the wires. Then you can um, remove the inverter and, and main board by pulling the, the hook out. Refer to the picture you see right there. There's a picture. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. You're going to have to pardon me. I have a little bit of a cold. Um, we're going to disconnect the sensor and the housing. Okay. So... If I want to get to the control panel itself in the front, here's how I have to do it. Remove three screws on the cap table. Disengage the housing connector. I'm going to remove the screws, uh, the, the screws for the housing. Then I'm going to unplug the housing. Okay. I'm going to disassemble the case, uh, the PCB um, display. I'm going to remove the three screws for that. Once I put those three screws in, um, I'm going to uh, dis disassemble the, the PCB, the PBA assembly. Okay. Does anybody have any questions so far? I'm going to give everybody just a minute and then I'm going to go back to full screen. Okay, no more, no more questions. Okay, all right. So let's talk about test modes. One thing about refrigerators today that wasn't, uh, I didn't have whenever I first started, is that um, there's test modes. I can I can test product. Um, I can run a fan. I can cycle uh, cycle the refrigerator. I can do all kinds of things through the test mode. Okay. So to get myself into the test mode, what am I doing? I'm going to press simultaneously. Okay. It's got to be simultaneously. You have to mash the freezer and the fridge button. You're going to hold those for about four seconds. I usually sit there and wait for it to beep, and then the display will start start blinking. So once I get that blink, I know that I'm okay to release it. <coughs> okay, once I do that, I'm going to press the freezer button. Once it starts blinking, I press the freezer button one time. That enters me into the test mode. Okay. So, like it, like this is basically how to do the exact same thing that we just kind of went through. Okay, you can, what I just explained right here is the freezer and button uh, are pressed simultaneously for four seconds or around four seconds. Um, the display will turn off and on um, for about three seconds with an interval of 0.5 seconds. Here you can take your freezer, your finger off the freezer button and the fridge button and press the freezer button. This product will enter the test mode, okay? During the test mode, if you press any button from among the buttons on the panel, it will work as a test button, okay? If you press the test button, it will change the following order, okay? A forced operation, 
a forced operation for the uh, for the freezer, one for the refrigerator. Um, that's the the R valve and the and the fan is off. Um, for forced operation three is the uh, F valve and the fan is on. That's the switching valve. Um, forced operation defrosting. Forced operation FR defrost. Defro that's for a, a forced defrost. Okay. If you have a if you do a forced defrost, it will cause um, it will make it go into um, the defrost mode. Okay. Um, you you cancel the button if you keep button mashing the button. You will now um, it will now exit the test mode. Okay, please turn off the power and then turn on again. So, like I said, this is this is whenever you're done um, with your cycles, you want to unplug it, let it sit for I I say three minutes. Everybody says it doesn't have to be that much, but I always leave it a little bit longer than I probably have to. But I want to make sure that I that I I've got it out and I'm not going to damage anything in the refrigerator. Okay, so the fresh your the number one forced operation. If you press any button in the test mode, the product will enter the forced operation one mode. Okay, when the product enters forced operation one mode, the panel and the display the LEDs in block A and block B. Okay. Here the buzzle will perform alarm and a beep is sounded. Okay. When forced operation is selected, the component will immediately work without a 10-minute delay in the operation mode. Here, if the product is defrosting, the defrosting will be immediately stopped and forced operation will be performed. If forced operation is performed immediately when the compressor is off, overload may occur. So you may hear the overload pop on the on the um, compressor. So the first thing that I always tell everybody is to listen. Make sure that what I'm doing, I'm, I'm watching and listening, okay? Uh, when forced operation is selected, the component in the, the freezer fan continues to operate for 24 hours, and the, the, R com the refrigerator compartment will work um, with the set temperature. Okay, so you're able to check your 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 um, your thermistor whenever you're doing this. Okay, uh, for, during forced operation, the power freeze and the power buttons will not work. All the buttons function normally if the function is selected. The power mode icon will be automatically turned off in about somewhere around 10 seconds. Okay, if you select the force defrost or the test cancellation with when one with one minute has not passed, um, you will have selected the forced operation. The set temperature will be changed to the previous set temperature. So whatever is the temperature is set at is where it will revert back to. Okay. Okay. Once you're once you're into the forced operation, the alarm will not stop until the forced operation is done. So that is why you know. It's your forced operation has finished. The, the, the buzzer will stop beeping. Okay. Okay. Forced operation number two. If you press any button twice in the test mode, the product will enter the forced operation mode. When the product enters the forced operation function, the panel display will uh, display all the LEDs of block A and block B. The buzzer will perform an alarm with a beep sound. So you're gonna get a beeping whenever you select forced operation on either one, forced operation number one or forced operation number two. Okay, the difference is you press every button, you, you can, you press any button twice in the test mode. It's when you drop it into forced operation number two. Then forced operation is selected. The component will be immediately work without um, the 10 minute delay. Okay. Um, the compressor, uh, if forced operation is performed immediately, 
Um, when the compressor is off, overlaid, may, maybe it's in both sides. It Once you put this into a forced operation and the compressor shuts off, you may, once it goes into forced operation, you may hear the overload click. So you're just going to have to, that usually is a three to four minute delay. Like I said, me, it's usually three minutes. Um, everybody else says you don't have to wait that long. It's about a minute and a half, two minutes. Um, okay. So when the operation is selected, the component and the the freezer fan will continuously work for 24 hours. Uh, the the, the uh, refrigerator valve will be closed and the refrigerator fan will be off. So if you've got both doors open, the, the refrigerator fan will shut off and the and the the switching valve will will, sh will close. Okay. The, during the forced operation, the power freeze and the power cool will not work. Same as it was on the on the forced operation number one. If you select forced operation defrosting or the cancellation when the one minute has not passed after you selected forced operation, the set temperature will be changed to the previous set temperature. In other words, the exact same temperature in the freezer. That was already set. So if it was set at minus one, that's what you're going to get is a minus one. Okay. During the forced operation, the alarm will continually sound whenever it turns off um, and it cancels. Um, it will shut the it will shut the alarm off. Okay. Now I'm going to go back out. Does anybody have any questions? Hey, 63 Impala, did you guys, did you get my uh, my email that uh, I sent you on the last class where you, where you had asked for a presentation? I just wanted to make sure you got it. Okay, I'm going to continue. We have a lot more to cover. These are very, you really need the manual to be able to do these so that you remember it. Uh, my memory retention as I've gotten older is, is getting shorter and shorter. Um, so make sure that we, um, that you have either the manual or this program so that you know how to revert back to know exactly where it is that you, uh, that you need to, you need to do. Okay, so here is the force defrost mode. This is the first thing that I always make sure that, that I have with me um, because more times than not, I'm going to need a, for, for, a forced uh, defrost. This is for the refrigerator. This is for little Johnny has left, have, has left the door open for an extended period of time, and now he's caused the whole refrigerator to freeze up. So I can put the refrigerator into a defrost mode. Um, so in the forced, defor forced defrost operation, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a forced operation number three. Um, you press any button more than once, the force to force, you force it into operation number three. If you press it, okay, will be it immediately canceled and the product will uh, return to the forced refrigerator to frosting. Okay, when the product enters the forced refrigerator frosting mode, the panel will be the panel in the with the LEDs is going to um, blink both block A and block B. If you look, it shows you right there where they're where they're blinking. Okay. The, the alarm will sound be on for three minutes, for three seconds. Um, when you enter the mode, it will stay on for about one second and be off for nine seconds in the, in the, for, the forced defrost mode. Okay. Okay. The forced defrost, forced refrigerator defrost okay the forced refrigerator the forced r defrosting status of test okay 
when the product enters the force to frost, um, all LEDs will blink and block A and block B. It will show you right there where what, what is going to be um, blinking. So if you go back to the previous side slide, you notice that uh, forced refrigerator frosting, that is two blocks that's going to be blinking. Okay, Both block A and block B are blinking. There's two. Whenever it comes down here, that was that was the forced uh, refrigerator. That's the forced uh, forced frost in the refrigerator in the freezer. I'm sorry, the freezer mode. So you're going to get two here. Okay. Whenever I come to the next one, I only get one. Okay. So same thing as the other one. You, the only difference is you've only got one block that's blinking. Okay, so this is the self-diagnostic mode. When you turn on the self-diagnostic mode, you're going to press the freezer and the refrigerator button again. Hold that for about 12 seconds. Okay, once, once it goes into it, the power is, uh, the micron determines whether the temperature sensor is out or or not within a within a couple of seconds. If the defective sensor is discovered, a result of self-diagnostic and the permanent display LEDs will flicker with the interval of five seconds. Okay. So if you run into this and it does, and you get the the um, interval of the, the five second delay, I mean the, the blinking. Um, the flickering, you're going to um, need to go to one of the other man in the other manual on down um, so that you can test the LED. I mean, the uh, excuse me, the defective sensor. Okay. Um, to cancel the error code, fix the failure, defective the sensor, or to cancel the initial set of diagnostic by pressing the freezer key and the fridge key for 13 seconds. Okay. So if you press the freezer and refrigeration for 13 seconds or longer, a uh, buzzer will sound. Um, the self-diagnostic mode will be selected. When the product tender self-diagnostic self mode, all the LEDs will be off. And there is a, no, excuse me, if there's an error, um, the arrow will display with uh, for about 60 seconds. After that, the product will return to normal status. Um, if a if a buzzer sound um, made, check the refrigerator. Check the list below for self diagnosis. Okay, input by the button is not accepted when the self diagnostic mode is on. So you can't you can't get uh, you can't change like the temperatures, okay? So here are the modes that you're going to see. This is the uh, the freezer. This is the um, refrigerator, okay? You see all the buttons. Need to remember these. We're going to go back to this, okay? So the self-diagnostic. Uh, so if we have a... a, a if it determines that there's a F5 on the display, uh, that's going to be that our we have a defrost error. Okay, so when the defrost time is ended, um, you're going to have to go in and you're going to have to replace the. Excuse me, you're going to have to replace the um, the 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 sensor. Okay, um, if you have an ambient sensor problem. It's a little more difficult to change, um, but it shows you right here what you're going to have to do to uh, to change that sensor. Um, what does that tell you? It's telling me that the ambient temperature is incorrect. Um, if I have a, a freezer sensor, you get an F3. If you get a refrigerator sensor, there's an F2. If you have a uh, freezer um, defrost sensor, 
That's an F1. Okay. If you notice, it's on each. It shows you exactly where it is on each one. Okay. If we have an R6, that's a uh, freezer fan error. Okay. If you have an R5, that's a, a condenser fan error. I'm sorry. A an R5 now is a uh, is a restrictions a restrictor to the sensing, uh, which is up in the refrigerator. I mean, in the freezer section. Okay. Um, we're if we have an F3, that's just a compartment error. You're going to have to go to the board. You're going to have to do some diagnostics. Um, you're going to have to um, check the compressor, make sure that everything on the compressor is is working properly. And you're going to uh, you're going to either have to replace the board or fix fix the problem that um, that's indicated. Okay, the um, the fridge light is off with the LED. Okay, you could have a bad uh, a refrigerator defrost sensor. That's if your light if your refrigerator lights off. Okay, if you have a um, a uh, fan restriction. We're going to get a, a power freeze LED that lights. Okay. If we have an ice maker problem, ice on the, on the LED, um, you're going to get an ice maker sensor and a uh, function error. So you're going to have to disassemble the ice maker and, and, and check it before you do anything else. Okay. Here again, F3. Is the if is the sensor um, gives you the voltage here? Okay, F two is the refrigerator sensor. So it's F three is the freezer. F two is the refrigerator, and it gives you the voltage. Okay, these are very important voltages that you're going to need. And F one is the freezer defrost sensor. Okay, I can tell you that I have replaced quite a few of the of the F ones. Um, and some of the times it's, it's actually the voltage going from the, from the, uh, board. Somehow it, it, it loses the, the board, uh, loses sending the correct voltage. Um, but you're going to, you're going to make sure that you, ch you check, you check your voltage, um, on your main PCB because you should get, uh, four to five, uh, ohms, volts, I'm sorry, 4.5 to 5, okay? The freezer off um, could be the voltage for the main PCB. Shows you where it's located in that refrigerator section at the very top there. Um, if you get an F4, that's the, uh, that's the voltage between the main PCB and should be within the same thing, 4.5 to 5. That's the that's the exterior sensor that's at the very top of the uh, refrigerator in the hinge uh, on the plate. Uh, you get an R6. That's a that's a fan in there. That's a freezer fan error. I will spit it out in a minute. Apologize about that. Um, the power freeze. You get a freezer a refrigerator fan error. <coughs> Excuse me. So. If the freeze, um, the freeze off light is blinking, you're going to get that. Ref that uh, I'm just going to go back over these. Okay, the refrigerator, the freeze, uh, the fridge light blinking is the R is the defrost sensor, the refrigerator. The power freeze um, ice maker is blinking. We get a refrigerator error. So your F4s are for your freezer. Okay, and your exteriors. Okay. Okay. R uh, R five is the is the condenser fan error. Uh, the fan motor works. The failure is displayed when the failure is feedback is a feedback signal. Okay. Excuse me. That's an R five. Okay, an F five. 
um, is a is it a frost error for the for the freezer? Okay, it tells you when it occurs. Uh, usually, it's whenever the housing separates. Uh, it's related to the freezer compartment. Um, the defrost heater contact is an error, so you're going to need to go back up and check all the all the connections there. If you have an ice maker error, uh, you're going to get the the light. Uh, Blinking. So you want to make sure that uh, you have all of those, you have all those enters. So here is the R3, or the R3. Oh, pardon me. It's a compressor error. The error will display when the compressor has failed. Okay. These all came directly out of the manual. This all gets back to um, some of the things that didn't actually line up. Okay, so the compressor error is an error display when the compressor has failed. It has nothing to do with the ice maker plug. Uh, but that's some of the things that have uh, that we were talking about. Okay, if the freezer button, the freezer button, and the fridge button are pressed simultaneously for seven seconds during the normal operation, um, the, the display will turn off and on. Block A and block B displays about four seconds uh, with about an, interview, an interval of about uh, 0.5 seconds. So if you look, block A, it, there's three that are lit in this test. There are four, there's three on both, both block A and block B, okay? If you if you push it for seven seconds, you're going to take your fingers off the freezer and uh, press the fridge button. Okay. Once you press the fridge button, it's going to ding, which is different than the other three that we've done. That was all by pressing the freeze the freezer button. So the difference is here we're going to press the fridge button. Okay. Um, the load condition display mode will let you know that the loads are current outputs of the uh, micron signal. Um, just means that the micron signal is outputted and does not confirm with what the rate, what the load is actually working on. Okay, the load condition display function lasts for about thirty seconds, and the product will automatically return to the normal display stats. Okay. The display of the permanent, the permanent display on the load condition is as follows. Okay. R1. In case uh, R1 is your refrigerator fan, uh, power LED freeze lights. That's the, uh, that, uh, that is the uh, fan has got low and high. That's when you're swapping. You're swapping the difference in the speeds. Um, overload condition tells you if it, that's an F2. Um, when the ambient temperature reaches 34 degrees or higher, the per, the uh, the LED blinks. Okay. Uh, uh, the the low condition, low temperature condition, as an F1, the ambient temperature is 23 degrees or lower, and the pertinent LED blinks. Okay. Normal condition, F1, F2, when the ambient sensor is between 22 and 33 degrees Celsius. Okay, exhibition mode. We're going to go through exhibition mode um, below because whenever I work for Circuit City and whenever I work for um, Best Buy, uh, we would sell stuff off the floor. Lo and behold, we, it would get it would get to the customer's house and the guys that installed it couldn't figure out how to get it out of excuse me out of exhibition mode okay f5 is the compressor in case the operation of the compressor the LED will blink um, water pipe heater when the water pipe heater works you're going to get uh, f3 Um Frost free uh, freezer fan is the R5. Okay. R3 is the 
the freezer fan in the low. Um, the R4 is the compartment, compartment uh, defrost heater. Um, freezer convert, uh, freezer convert fridge. Um, blinks in the operation of the condenser fan and pertinent LED blinks. So um, that's on the high. Uh, the condenser fan low is the freezer convert off. Yeah, that blinks at the operation of the freezer and the pert pertinent LED blinks. Okay. The frost free valve, I'm sorry, the freezer valve is R2. The the refrigerator valve is R1. Whenever you do this, you're gonna make you're gonna switch you're gonna swap between the freezer and the refrigerator valve. Okay. The power cool, um, the, the 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 ice full light comes on. Okay, and that that um, opens with the pertinent um, with the LED. Okay. Um, in case of a blackout. So if you lose power, um, when it, sometimes you have to reset this. Okay. So whenever you lose power, when the initial, when the power comes on, the product judges the temperature inside their freezer. The temperature inside the fridge the temperature of the freezer defrosting sensor and the temperature of the frost, the uh, fridge defrosting sensor. At, at each of these points, among the four temperatures is less than um, about three, uh, 12 degrees Celsius. The product judges that there's a, a, a temporal blackout condition operation and it recovers, it sends the, the um, functions um into the into the uh, display panel. Okay, when the power the product judges the temperature inside the freezer, same thing. Da 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 da. Um, and we're going to just make sure that um, all four temperatures are about the correct temperature, and it'll all send it over to the to the board, and the board knows that everything is working properly. Okay. Okay. So we're, I'm going to go through those. Now we're going to go to. So one of the things that you can do with this is that I can adjust the water supply. Okay. So if you look at it, um, the water supply on the right on the right side is um, will show will increase the the uh, will increase the the amount of water that is put into the ice maker. Um, you may need to adjust that as the customer's refrigerator gets a little older. You may need to bump it up just a little bit. Usually you don't have to bump it down. You want to make sure though that it's, it is fill, filled to the proper level. Um, you don't want it to overflow into the bin and cause uh, a freezing condition in the bin. So that ice, all the ice cubes are, um, are all all on, are all frozen together. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about the this the fridge display. The panel set is about zero is five seconds. Um, one is five point nine seconds. Okay. Now these are your error codes. Hey, Impala, will you do me a favor? Um, type in your, your email again for me, 
and I will make sure that you get that other one um, from two weeks ago. I'll make sure that you get that. I thought for sure that, that it, it showed that it went, but evidently um, it didn't go. Okay. Anybody else have any questions before we go back? Okay. So these are your error codes. Okay. So once you get your error codes, you can use this step diagram to access and make sure that, that you're diagnosing the unit properly. So, okay. So the first thing is main uh, PCB connector. The CN30 is inserted properly. Okay. If, if the guy behind you has gone and, and unhooked it and put it back together, I have had them where they were one pin off and it uh, threw everything off. Um, so you have to make sure that those are inserted properly. If it's no, you go to the right side of the chart. If it's yes, you go straight down. Okay. You look at uh, the re the um, refrigerator sensor. Is it uh, is it working properly? Um, if you look right here, the data is the temperature tape. The, the resistance um, reading is between uh, between CN31 and number seven and number eight. Um, a a Q a zero zero is short. A, an O is open equals O is open. Okay. You're going to, you're going to keep following it down. Um, if you're, if it shows, if it doesn't get that, um, and the answer is no, that it's not in between those. All you do is come over here to the side and replace the sensor. Does the whole, the same thing, the whole way down. Okay. I will send, I will send this to you. If you will just, uh, let me know. Um, in the comments, whenever we get through, just exactly how many of you want this program. If you don't want to order the manual and you're a technician, um, go ahead and send it to me. Um, if you're not a technician, uh, order it through either Samsung or the, um, excuse me, or, or um, one of the online manuals that you can order through. Okay, so once again, okay, all of these, we start at the main PCB, okay, and we work our way down. If we look at the sensor reading, making sure that the refrigerator sensor, um, what it's, so it's showing that if it's uh, zero, zero, you have a short, if it's equals equals zero um you have it open um if it's if it's short you're gonna replace it if it's zero uh you're gonna need that so you just move on down is the most is the voltage properly between the pins yes and no okay what happens if it's not you're gonna check your wire connections okay um the input voltage at the um at the um, IC10 micron pin is 52 is normal. Okay. So we're going to go through all, you're going to go through all of this just to make sure that all of these are, you can go through. Okay. If something happens and the freezer fan is not, op is not um, operating on the motor, on the, on the BLDC motor, the refrigerator uses this uh, BD BLDC fan motor. Um, the, the BLDC motor operates with a uh, direct current of somewhere between 7 and 12 volts. The fan generally runs together with the compressor. Um, if, you, if it doesn't, you need to check the two. Uh, the two. Okay. Um, right here is we're just going to continue on these charts. Um, if the compressor is off, we're going to check uh, yes. We're going to run the forced operation. Once we do this, we, we're going to check and see if uh, DC7 is 
um, on the main PCB, um, DC 30, uh, um, pin number nine. Now, does the fan operate? No, I come all the way down to the bottom. Okay, if it does, then we've got to have another problem. Okay, apply power to seven, apply power in seven minutes after turning the motor off to prevent the compressor from being overloaded. Um, if you overload the compressor, you're gonna have, you're gonna listen to it, the uh, the overload click. Okay, um, you just keep going through this microwave this this block diagram, um, and you're gonna just follow these all the way down. It, depending on which problem you have. Okay. Now here is a picture of the diagram. I'm sorry, of the board. And you're going to go through and see C, pin C9. Uh, connector C90 is the ice maker. Um, the, the other one is, are the other um, connectors. If I have... This is what shows me uh, what it, what goes to it. Okay, so now we're these are the pins that I'm going to go to um, that I know which ones to look at. Always go to your to your. I always tell you always go to your wiring schematic so that you know exactly which pins go to where. Okay. If you have any questions, let me know. Okay. Here is a breakdown of this is one of the best things. This tells you what what pins if you're if you're trying to look and see if you have a let's say that I open the the um, the back cover and I see a burn mark here at at, at number five. So I come over here and it says five receives various sensor signals and derives them from the from the to the it, it delivers them to the uh, to the processor um, and it also eliminates noises and the fridge freezer door opening um, will send it over to the processor. So that's what this this one does. So if I see a burnt spot on the board i can look at it and try to find out <coughs> what it's actually <coughs> probably usually whenever i had one of these uh the 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 component that was associated with it i also had to replace okay and this is what they are okay we're at a minute and 33 seconds. I mean, one hour and 33 seconds and eight seconds. Does anybody have any questions? If you want this, oh, we dropped down to two people. Um, if you want this, go ahead and um, let me know in the comments. I will wait a couple of minutes here, and before I close the session out, does anybody have any questions? Okay, everybody. Oh, okay. Um, MW, or maybe it's MIW. Give me your email. Okay. Um, but if you'll give me your email, I'll send you the program, or you can just rewatch either way.
Okay, everybody. I really appreciate everybody's attendance. If you have any questions, our numbers are scrolling across the bottom. Please don't hesitate to either call myself, email me, or Reggie. They're both information, all the information scrolling across the bottom. Once again, thank you very much. Have a wonderful day and please be safe out there.